Good morning and welcome to St. Timothy United Methodist Church in beautiful Brevard, North Carolina. We are thrilled that you have gathered with us this morning in one purpose, to worship God. Friends, in Psalm 65, 8, the psalmist says to God, The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. Friends, today another opportunity has dawned, and we have the joy to worship our Savior today. He is calling each one of us to enter into worship with him. Leave behind the baggage and just enter into his presence today. I want to begin this morning with some announcements. Uh, one, I'd like to say that there will be an outdoor worship service next Sunday at 11 a.m. in our parking lot, weather permitting. That's Sunday, October 4th. Um, I do need some help. I need four volunteers to help with parking and a couple other people to help with handing out song lyrics. So we invite everyone to come out. We will try once again to have the radio, but it worked out last time with just the speakers, but we're going to try the FM transmitter again. But we invite you all to come out. If you could contact me, if you could help by Monday evening, I'd appreciate it. One announcer is a church council meeting on October 13th, a church council meeting on October 13th. There will also be a Transylvania County Missional Network Charge Conference on October 25th. That's a uh, Transylvania County Missional Network Charge Conference on, on October 25th at 1 p.m. That will be via Zoom. Um, also, I'd like to remind you that we are uh, using this story not only as part of our sermon series, but also as a part of a Bible study. If you'd like to participate in that Bible study, you can gather with us on Thursday morning at 11 or Thursday evening at 6.30 for discussion on what we're discovering through our readings, through the teaching video by Randy Frazee, and through our own private study. At this time, I invite you to join the singing of our introit, I Love You, Lord. It's number 2068 in the faith we sing, and the words will appear on your screen. Thank you everyone for worshiping God through song. I invite you now to join me in the call to worship and the words will be on the screen. Our help is in the name of the Lord our God, the maker of heaven and earth, who comes to our aid in times of need, who gives us the courage to do what we know is right, who invites us to turn away from the influences of the world around us and confess him alone as Savior and Lord. This is our God. Let's worship our God together. Now, if you'd bow in prayer with me. Liberating God, we worship you. We praise you for delivering your people of old from enslavement in Egypt. 
by opening up a new and unexpected future for them. They experienced your grace and mercy in awesome and life-sustaining ways, which must have been like an impossible dream coming true. Through these acts, you showed your compassion for the weak and powerless of this world. We praise and adore you for opening up a new future for us when your love and compassion, your mercy and grace became enfleshed in Jesus Christ our Lord. He delivered us from the bondage of evil and sin through his death on the cross. The impossible once more became reality when love defeated evil once and for all. We pray that this time of worship will be a true offering of our wonder and praise, that you should care for us so deeply and so faithfully. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, if we were meeting here in the sanctuary, I'd ask you to turn to one another and greet each other in the peace of Christ. We're not gathered here. We're gathered in a hundred different places. But we can still offer the peace of Christ to those we care about. So would you do that now? Would you pick up your phone and text somebody, call someone, email someone? with the peace of Christ. I invite you now to join Daniel in singing our opening hymn, The Lone Wild Bird. It's number 2052 in the faith we sing and the words will be on your screen. First reading. Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the west end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. The angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire, blazing out of the middle of a bush. He looked, the bush was blazing away, but it didn't burn up. And Moses said, what's going on here? I can't believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't the bush burn up? God saw that he had stopped to look, and God called him from out of the bush. Moses! Moses! He said, yes, I'm right here. And God said, don't come any closer. 
Remove your sandals from your feet. You're standing on holy ground. And then he said, I am God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, afraid to look at God. And God said, I've taken a good long look at the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. I know all about their pain. And now I've come down to help them, pry them loose from the grip of Egypt, get them out of that country and bring them to a good land with wide open spaces, a land lush with milk and honey, the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hervite, and the Jebusite. The Israelite cry for help has come to me, and I've seen for myself how cruelly they've been treated by the Egyptians. It's time for you to go back. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the people of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses answered God, But why me? What makes you think that I could ever go to Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? I'll be with you. God said, and this will be the proof that I am the one who sent you. When you have brought my people out of Egypt, you will worship God right here at this very mountain. And then Moses said to God, suppose I go to the people of Israel and I tell them, the God of your fathers sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? What do I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. Tell the people of Israel, I am sent me to you. God continued with Moses. This is what you say to the Israelites. God, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob sent me to you. This has always been my name, and this is how I always will be known. Friends, let's bow in prayer. Lord God, great I am, our Father everlasting. Lord Jesus, our crucified and risen Savior, Holy Spirit, our constant comforter. O oh Lord, our triune God, you are the everlasting one. We come together in faith in you. In this moment of worship, we gather as your children, your church, with minds attuned to you and with hearts devoted to you. It is in you we place our faith, especially during these difficult months and this disruptive, turbulent, fearful, and uncertain time. Remind us that you invite us to cling to you. Though we find ourselves in uncharted territory, remind us that as our sovereign triune God, this does not take you by surprise, nor is this uncharted territory for you. Lord, how great you are. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. You alone are our good shepherd. In you, there is life with no lack. You lead us to green pastures and beside still waters. You restore our anxious and weary souls. Even in the darkest valleys, we will not fear, for you are right here with us. You are always attentive to us. You provide for us, you guide us, you watch behind us and you go before us. We find safety, comfort, peace, and joy in your omnipotent and loving nail-scarred hands. We cast our cares on you, for you care for us. For nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now, Lord, as your dependent yet expectant children, we come to you with humble hearts, asking you to watch over and guide our congregation, our city, our nation, and the global community in this time of global pandemic. We ask for your attentive presence and merciful care upon the most vulnerable among us, the most physically vulnerable, emotionally vulnerable, and economically vulnerable. Grant to our medical research and healthcare workers protection from illness and give them in your grace extra strength and resilience. We pray for Brevard, for North Carolina, for the leaders of the, our governments, for our business leaders, for our caretakers, for each and every person out there 
seeking to make this life a better life for others. We ask that you would protect them from illness and grant to them great wisdom and strength in the midst of so many demands and so much stress. And Lord, as St. Timothy's, we pray that you would protect and provide for us in the ever-changing and difficult days ahead. Help us to joyfully and sacrificially be the eyes, ears, hands, and feet of Jesus to each other and to our neighbors. Now hear us pray as your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, if we were gathered, I would grab the offering plates and invite the ushers to come and take up the offering. I'm asking you now to take up the offering, to write your check and mail it in to go online and arrange for it to be sent in electronically. However it is that you give, if you would continue to give to the ministries at St. Timothy, to continue to give to God's ministry in our community. Thank you for your generosity. Which are called by my name shall humble themselves, shall humble themselves and pray. If my people, which are called by my name, shall seek my face and turn from the Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for all that we have. Lord, today we come bearing and offering our gifts and tithes. We ask you to bless them, to anoint them, to ensure that our heart's giving is out of love and compassion. Lord, use this money. Use all that we are and all that we have to share your gospel, to share your good news of your son, Jesus Christ, so that all might hear, that all might believe, 
that all may be in right relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for this incredible opportunity you give us to be a part of your ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear now the word of God from Exodus 12, 21 through 32. Moses assembled all the elders of Israel, and he said, Select a lamb for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop and dip it into the bowl of blood and smear it on the lintel and on the two doorposts. No one is to leave the house until morning. God will pass through to strike Egypt down. When he sees the blood on the lintel and the two doorposts, God will pass over the doorway. He won't let the destroyer enter your house to strike you down with ruin. Keep this word. It's the law for you and your children forever. When you enter the land which God will give you as he promised, keep doing this. And when your children say to you, why are we doing this? Tell them. It's the Passover sacrifice to God who passed over the homes of the Israelites in Egypt when he hit Egypt with death but rescued us. The people bowed and worshiped. The Israelites then went and did what God had commanded Moses and Aaron. They did it all. At midnight, God struck every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sits on his throne, right down to the firstborn of the prisoner locked up in jail, also the firstborn of the animals. Pharaoh got up that night, and he and all his servants and everyone else in Egypt What wild wailing and lament in Egypt. There wasn't a house in which someone wasn't dead. Pharaoh called in Moses and Aaron that very night and said, Get out of here and be done with you, you and your Israelites. Go worship God on your own terms. And yes, take your sheep and cattle as you've insisted, but go and bless me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, we could spend months delving into Exodus, the story of God delivering the people of Israel from bondage and slavery in Egypt. We're going to take one day in the midst of this Bible study and sermon series we're doing. But I want you to remember as you read this, there's a story about God and God's deliverance, God's faithfulness to his people, God's faithfulness to his promise. I also want you to look and see who God used. I want you to look at Moses. When God says, I choose you, (laughs) and Moses says, but I'm slow at tongue. I stutter. Pharaoh hates me. God says, I can use you. If you want to call on your brother to help, that's fine, but you are my man. If you'll go, I'll use you. Friends, if we would but say the same thing to God, Lord, I'm not qualified, but I'll go. God can use us to do amazing things. Now, as I was studying this week, I remembered a quote from a book I read a few years ago. It's a quote that I keep close, one that I have to use to remind myself That God doesn't call me to be comfortable. Here's what the quote says. But God doesn't call us to be comfortable. He calls us to trust him so completely that we are unafraid to put ourselves in situations where we will be in trouble if he doesn't come through. And and this was by Francis Chan, a a pastor and author, It was in crazy love, overwhelmed by a restless God. That's a quote that I use a lot. I use it to remind myself 
that God doesn't call me to be comfortable. He calls me to trust him. And I, I thought of this quote because this, this was the reality for Moses. Moses needed to trust God so completely and be so unafraid. Because if God didn't show up, Pharaoh was going to end him. But God shows up. God shows up in very powerful ways. Now, one of the things that happens here in, in this reading from Scripture that we read for the story is the, the idea that God reveals himself in a very intimate way to Moses. He says, Moses wants his name. Who do I say is sending me? And God says it. Now, in, in the Old Testament, the Jewish people would never say the name of God. Um, they would use a transliteration of, of Yahweh. Um, when you see the word Lord in the Bible, the, the capital L, small cap, O or D, um, that's, that's in the English Bible, that's the same word as the Hebrew Yahweh which is the name that, Jesus, that God said he was to be called. I am. So every time you hear the word Yahweh, or every time you see Lord in the English Bible, you should think this is a proper name like Peter or John. Now this name is built out of the word for I am. And it's to remind us each time that God absolutely is. It's what God told Moses, I am. Here are a few words I want you to remember. What that means for God to say to Moses, I am. It reminds us that Yahweh is the self-existent, eternal God. That he created all there is. He sustains all that is. Yahweh is with us. Yahweh is the unchanging God. Yahweh is holy other than us. Yahweh keeps his covenant with us. And maybe the one we dislike the most, Yahweh is full of mystery. There's a lot of answers that come out of the questions, a lot of unanswered questions out of the readings for this week. Why? Why did God wait so long? Why did he allow God, the Israelites, to be in bondage to Egypt? I don't know those answers. I can give you my thoughts and ideas. But suffice to say, God is a mystery. God's ways aren't our ways. But friends, I know this. One day we'll have all the answers. For now, we're asked to trust God. Trust him enough to know that if he doesn't show up, we're in big trouble. But trust me, know that God will show up. God had a plan. And God's plan was to deliver his people, Israel, from bondage to Egypt. Here's what the Lord said. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters. For I am aware of their suffering, so I have come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite and Hittite, Amorite, Perizzite, Hittite, and Jebusite. Now behold, the cry of the sons of Israel have come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression for which the, Egypt, the Egyptians are oppressing them. Therefore, come now and I will send you to Pharaoh so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. God sends Moses. Moses goes and grabs his brother Aaron and says, come, let's do this thing for God. And they go before Pharaoh and Moses says, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, no. You know the story. It may be the third most known story of all of scripture behind Jesus' birth and Jesus' death. For people of a certain age and above, 
Most of us have seen the Ten Commandments. So it's a story we know. Pharaoh doesn't want to let the Egyptian slaves go. It would wreck the economy. It would wreck the lifestyles of the Egyptians. And they wouldn't support him. And so he says no. And God goes about changing Pharaoh's mind. He does it by sending some devastating things upon the earth. Finally, after each one, Pharaoh says no. Finally, God tells Moses, Pharaoh's going to let you go. I'm going to take the firstborn of all of Egypt. But I'm going to keep the Israelites safe if they will do what I ask them to do. And so God has them slaughter a lamb, what's known as the Passover lamb. And they're, take some, they're to take some of the blood and put it on either side of the door and above the door. And as destruction comes, as death comes to Egypt, over each home that has the blood on the doorway, God will pass over. God will save them. And it's what happens. It's a horrible story, but it's a powerful story. If you have trust in God, I will save you, he says. I mean, think about it. It seems kind of silly. I'm going to kill all the firstborn, including the animals. But if you'll kill a lamb and put the blood over your doorpost, and if you stay inside the house, no harm will come to you. I'm sure many scoffed. Many had faith, and those who had faith lived. It's not unlike the story of our salvation, of our deliverance from bondage to sin. Jesus says, believe upon me. Jesus says, believe upon his blood, his death on the cross. He says, put put my blood on the doorpost of your heart, your soul and death will pass over you, and you will have life eternal. Many of us scoff, maybe even some who are watching this worship service. But friends, God wants to deliver us. He wants to do it himself. There's no effort on our part. All we do is have to have faith, faith in God, faith in the acts of Jesus Christ, Faith in the act of the Holy Spirit to raise Jesus from the dead. So I'm asking you today, friends, do you believe the story of Moses that God came and delivered the children of Israel from Egypt? And he did it through blood on a doorpost. I'm asking you to believe that Jesus Christ wants wants to deliver you and I if we'll just put his blood on the doorpost of our hearts and souls. If we'll but have faith in him and his act on the cross and his life, death, resurrection, and ascension. If we'll say yes to Jesus, if we'll obey God, if we'll say, Lord, I love you and trust you, then we too will be passed over to death. Oh, this body will go away. But we will find ourselves living eternally in God's very presence. And friends, that's what the story is about. As you read through the book of the Bible in the next 28 weeks, as we follow this story, it is all about God's grace and mercy and love. It's a story of how God interacts with us. How far God will go to show you how much he loves you and how much he desires to be in an intimate relationship with you. So friends, if you haven't already, would you accept the act of Jesus Christ, his death, his resurrection, his ascension? Will you say yes to God's deliverance? Will you put the blood of Christ on the doorpost of your heart and soul? Would you call God Father and ask him to deliver you? 
And now would you say thank you to him? Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you for your amazing grace, for your mercy. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, I want us to close with a hymn, Guide Me, O Great Jehovah. It's number 127 in the United Methodist Hymnal. And Daniel will lead us. The words will be on your screen. singing together. Receive this blessing. May the Lord bless and protect you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you. May God be gracious to you, show you his favor, and give you his peace. Go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.